More releases on the way in WWE. At least that's the rumors that after the Extreme Rules pay-per-view that there will be more Friday releases. So the earliest that that could happen would be May 27th post-pay-per-view. Now, recently on the quarterly earnings, Vince McMahon talked about superstars returning. And I was going to make a video talking about the superstars returning too, and we're going to kind of mix these videos, but Vince McMahon said something very key. In the next 30 days, he has multiple superstars returning from Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, John Cena, Bray Wyatt, huge names. In anticipation of that, he says, in total in the next 30 days, there's a minimum of 17 new superstars coming to the roster or returning superstars. And when you think about that number, that is a huge number. 17 people that aren't currently on TV or currently away from injuries are scheduled to come back or debut in the WWE. If you look at the people that could possibly debut down from NXT, you have tag teams that could possibly debut. You have superstars. You have Balor that could come up. Maybe the Balor Club or the Bullet Club comes in. And the, the teased one between Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson and AJ Styles isn't really a thing. There's so much that could happen. Now, we were all shocked last week with the release of Damian Sandow. And there's rumors that have been coming out that he wasn't released for anything that he did. That Vince McMahon and the company just wanted to freshen up the roster. And as pissed off as I am, the fact that Damian Sandow wasn't necessarily released. I was pissed off because they had a guy that was more over than Daniel Bryan in certain spots. With his, his cheers, his reactions, on the level of Daniel Bryan in a way. And then they blew it. That's just my honest reaction. They, they, they absolutely blew Sandow, so he got released. But with Vince McMahon's comments now, it kind of makes me, que not, not necessarily question it, but make me more open to it. If you think about it, yes, we are losing guys that have been in the company a long time, or girls or women that have been in the company a long time. Uh, you lost Hornswoggle, Alex Riley, people that weren't really doing anything. But they have so many new signings. And then the classic, the Cruiserweight Classic. And so many superstars that are getting signed on a, on a, on a monthly basis. I was going to say daily, but not daily. So frequently now in the WWE, there's going to be turnover. You're going to get maybe your one or two runs like Damian Sandow did. And then chances are you might get released if you're not a mainstay. If you truly look at the amount of talent WWE has from all the guys they've signed from past from TNA, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, uh, Eric Young, Bobby Roode, Austin Aries, uh, these are all guys that are still down in NXT. You have even more talent that's still down in NXT, like I said, Finn Balor. Finn Balor. I'll try to say it like that. Finn Balor. Uh, you got so many other talents. You have Apollo Crews that already is up on the main roster, which... I, I personally, I don't know, man, if his debut has gone over as well as, say, like the Vaude Villains or Enzo and Big Cast, but I do see money in uh, Apollo Crews. Uh, you have guys right now like Neville that are out injured. Uh, that His injury is a little bit more recent, so chances are he's not going to be back for a while, but still, I mean, those are guys that are going to come back. Uh, and that's an already stacked roster. You look who else is down there, like Elias Sampson, the Drifter. I really like his character down in NXT. Uh, you have uh, Gable and Jordan. Uh, absolutely fantastic. They're going to spice up the roster. Uh, th there's so many talents that could possibly get called up that when you look at these superstar releases, now the names that are floating around for releases this time um, were ones that were on the list last time, like Adam Rose, uh, Ryback. Now there's talks about not releasing Ryback and just letting his contract expire this summer, that it's probably just easier for them to let it run out than to re-sign him. And the things that he was wanting was some things that seemed pretty basic. I mean, just hotels covered, um, road expenses covered, maybe cars, food, etc. If you think about Ryback, he eats a lot of food. Um, but I was thinking about this. If, if you think about it, when I book a trip to WrestleMania, or I've never actually booked a trip to WrestleMania. I've gotten flown there both times, but... Um, when you look at hotels, when you contemplate going, the hotels that are in the general vicinity are expensive as hell, $200, $300, $400 a night. And I remember we went to party with the superstars last year after WrestleMania in the fancy hotel that they were in. I think it was like $380 a night. And if you're there for a week, five days at that hotel, that's $1,700. bucks. And then I started thinking about that. If you extrapolate that out and you have, let's say you stay in a cheap hotel by yourself, and this is why a lot of wrestlers share two, three, four room if you're in the indies, whatnot. But when you're in the WWE and you have that big contract and all of a sudden you're spending, if you think about it, 200 days a week on the road, maybe, let's just say that, an estimated, say, $150 a night in hotel because WWE doesn't stay in the cheap hotels, you're looking at $30,000 a year just for hotel expense, 
just for hotel expense. If you're on a $150,000 or $300,000 a year contract, one-tenth or more of your income is going just to travel. I had a friend who was recently uh, offered a job with the WWE uh, for photography. She went through four rounds of it, and then by the end of it, the salary was only about $30,000, and you had to pay for travel and all of your expenses. So she thought about it. She still had to live in Stanford, which is rent was like $800 to $900 a month, um, and then pay to travel to all these events, those little shitty airports that you have to fly into that are like a six dollars $700 plane ticket. And if you're on the road 30 weeks a year, you know, 50 dates, um, times that out, you're basically a free intern. So WWE is going to need to clear up cap space and room, and I think that's what a lot of these releases are, and these what the releases are doing. So if you look on the roster, who really hasn't done anything? And it, it really kind of blows my mind. I mean, I, I made a tweet a couple days ago about Primo and Epico still on the roster, but Sandow's gone. And for the most part, it was really liked, retweeted, favorited. Uh, there's a couple people that are like, man, fuck you, I like Primo and Epico. I'm not saying that Primo and Epico weren't good when they were tag team champions and they had something going until they screwed it up with uh, Los Matadores, and now they're getting repackaged again, but they're getting multiple shots. Probably, you know, maybe the family name or maybe WWE really does see something in them, but with the amount of tag teams they have, man, is it really worth putting so much effort into these guys? You think about it. So I'm pretty sure their names are not going to be in the chopping block. You look at other people that are still in the company. Today, WWE announced that Christian has been released from uh, his wrestling contract. So he still works with WWE for you know Edge and Christian show and still works and is affiliated with the company. But Christian was released from his wrestler's contract. They're freeing up money. Okay. So now why Christian was still on a contract for the last two years, I don't know. Uh, they, they, they shut him down because of concussions. And then now he's you know doing his thing. And I think he's doing a good job. But... I mean, he was still on a wrestler's deal, so that wrestler's deal is gone. Uh, you have them releasing longtime employee Brooklyn Brawler. After 30 years, Brooklyn Brawler is no longer with the company. That's a crazy thing to think about. Hornswoggle, just coming up on 10 years, is gone from the company. We're at a point where we're going to start to see more names get released, and I, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, there's rumors of it being a high-profile diva, a high-profile women's wrestler. Um which, I mean, if you start thinking about names, you could think of uh, names like Rosa Mendez, who I don't necessarily think is going to get released. Um, and then you think about the bigger names. Maybe Paige. Uh, Paige has been very outspoken. She really hasn't done anything as of late. Paige could be on the chopping block, honestly. I think Paige would be um, my number one wrestler on that list. Not saying that I want her to get released, but if you're looking at the top women right now, uh, Cameron already got released. I, I don't see Trinity um, or Tamina getting released, um, especially with their connection to the Usos and The Rock. Um, and uh, so I, I don't see like the Usos getting released. I don't see um, a, a lot of superstars that aren't getting released. Not I think. Maybe Connor and Victor, if you think about it, um, you know they had something special going in the Ascension down at NXT. It never worked on the main roster. They were jobbed out. Victor failed the test. Now Connor's doing nothing. That could potentially leave Connor out to dry, and um, you know maybe they get fired. Maybe uh, a guy like Heath Slater finally gets released, which would suck. And I think there's a lot of fans that wish they would do something with Heath. You know, ever since that, the Nexus days and the One Man Southern Rock Band days, and you know, him facing a bunch of uh, legends and getting crapped on every week. And there's not every wrestler in the WWE is going to be this this wrestler that's going to go out there, win huge matches. There's going to be comedy spot guys. There's going to be, you know, people that fill the role. And Heath does that. And it'd be a shame if he got released, man. It really would. Uh, other names on the, the roster that could possibly get released if you look at it. Ryback, like I said, possibly let his contract go. Uh, big show. Now, I know a lot of people hate on Big Show for his constant turns and everything, but the more you listen to him in his podcast, like, who the fuck else can go out there and flip? They're like, hey, we need to get this guy over. Big Show, your face tonight, go do it. You know, like, who else could do that? And the fact that Big Show is just cool with all that and he's just here to make everybody better, and I respect Big Show more than ever. Uh, I, I love the Big Show, man. I love his, his ethic, his attitude towards it. He's like, yeah, I hate it, but uh, it's my job. You know, they tell me to go do it, I'm going to do it. You look at a guy like Kane, hasn't really done anything, been in the company a very, very long time. Would they release a guy like Kane? I don't think so. Um, you look on the roster on who else they have. I mean, if they do release some big names, you're going to have other names filling their spots from NXT. 
And you have to wonder if these guys that have been in the company a long time and haven't necessarily, let's say they haven't really gotten over, like Darren Young and Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil kind of got that big push over the whole father thing and then getting suspended and then people wanted him back and it didn't really work. And now you have Darren Young working on the make Darren Young great again with Bob Backlund, which is just kind of weird in my opinion, but hey, whatever tries to get it over, it's probably easier for WWE to bring up a superstar from NXT who has yet to be on the main roster than it is to spend time to invest in reinventing a character like Damian Sandow. And it's probably easier for WWE to go out of their way to release these guys that you know have been with the company a long time. They're going to be fan favorites, but fan favorites that maybe aren't selling merchandise, aren't being utilized. There are so many talents when you look at the NXT roster, who's possibly coming in. You know, you've got um, Zack Sabre Jr., Noam Dar, uh, who else is in the Cruiserweight Classic that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, God damn, I, I had all these names floating around in my head before, and I, I kind of forgot about them. I'm just more concerned about Zack Sabre Jr. than anybody. Uh, you have um, TJ Perkins uh, is in. You, uh, I mean, if you think about the names that are in the Cruiserweight Classic, which I could probably pull them up uh, really quick and, and figure this out, because with all these people being signed, you got to make room. And I, so I think a lot of people are uh, going to complain with these releases. And I want to know your guys' thoughts and opinions on this, because let's be real here. There are going to be superstars that get released. And when they get released... I don't think it's anything because of what they're doing or it's a bad thing for the WWE or um, we should think that they did something wrong. Like a lot of people are going to assume like, hey, uh, they're being released. So that must mean they're bad. I don't think so at all. I think they're going to have a lot of releases because there is so much wrestling talent in the world right now that WWE is finally recognizing. They're not going after the big muscly guys like Ryback. They're going after guys that are fan favorites that also possibly could look to part, maybe signing Moose down the line from ROH. So many options for the WWE that releases are going to happen. As pissed off as I was last week when Damian Sandow got released and thinking how, I was more pissed off at the fact that they had a guy that was so over and they blew him versus thinking when you rationally think about it like, God damn, WWE screwed up here. But look what they have coming down the pipeline. And that's just the honest truth. WWE has a lot of superstars coming up. Uh, a lot of superstars are going to get pushed. A lot of superstars are going to get over. And I'm just excited for the ride, man. So releases may happen, but just know down the line, bigger things are happening.